Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Golden Gloves website. Look who I caught up with in Tata, the great, <laughs> the legendary. Welcome, Nita. Seven, Ooh, the legend. seven time, thank you, welcome. So are you. Welcome to the Golden Gloves website. All right. Welcome, Nita, ladies and gentlemen, is a seven time IBF junior featherweight champion of the world. Beat Fabri Fabrice Benetou yes. back in 1987, was it right? 90, no, 90. 1990, 1990 beat 90 Fabrice Israel. Benetou. Um, welcome. Firstly, tell us about where how did you get into boxing? You know, Isla Nani is an uh, is, uh, is area of boxing. Uh, even though there are other sporting codes, but boxing is the sport in Island. And you can recall way back uh, uh, the old timers like Undekana, then comes yes. Happy Boy and Clutch, yes. and then comes Tietze Moratlana, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, but I became the first um, to bring the world title um, in 1990 when I fought uh, Fabrice Benicho in Israel. So you were the first world champion ever from this ever region? Ever from this region. Awesome they were who, Those who were greater than me, like as I said, Happy Boy and Clutchy, Willy Yes, Kolo. yes. They were kind of, but I am the first to bring the world. The first world champion. First world champion. And you know what's so amazing? Because the years go so fast. You and I were sparring partners that the viewers don't even know about. And you were one of my best sparring partners and my favorite <laughs> fighters. I called you the little Sugar Ray Leonard of South yes, African boxing. I remember. And I didn't even realize you were the first world champion from Manitani from this part of the world. Yeah, I'm the first world champion. I, re I remember those days when I was fighting other cars, your, your fights, um, when you will be like, we will be running in the morning. And then I w there was this mentality, I'm going to say, it, that we had this mentality that uh, no white guy can overcome me and stuff like that. No white guy can outrun you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm talking about generally, yeah, yeah. there was that mentality within Until the process. Until you ran with Brown And then uh, there you were. <laughs> and then we were running. Thank I think, you. I think we were in, uh, in, in um, the first time was in um, Panama. Yes. Yes. And we were running in the morning. And I was like kind of running. I know um, my clubmates were, couldn't match up with me on, on running. So wow. there, you, there you are. And I was kind of like upping up the pace. And then there you were there. I was like, whoa. <laughs> this, this white guy right here can run. This white guy can run. <laughs> Thanks, This white can run. Well, but, uh, but now it, uh, it comes back to those, I mean, from those days, you know. Yes. Um, I've got motivation from working with you, um, you. as a world champion. and. Um, when I was sort of like started to get involved working with Rodney, uh, Rodney Payment, that is Golden Gloves, yes. through Mzi, obviously. Yes. Um, Mzi was my manager. Um, he's the one who sort of paved the way through Ruben Rasodi. Apparently, Ruben Rasodi um, identified me uh, when I was fighting uh, Joe Mia in uh, Port Elizabeth, defending my title uh, for the market, approaching Mzi, and Mzi was approached by them, and, and he started from there. And it went on. As we fought over there, all of a sudden I saw myself, I'm fighting under your fights. Um, you were with Carlos Chacama. Yes, then. of course, you fought a lot of times on my yeah, undercard. Yes. And it is then that I started to, you know, get motivated um, by seeing the way you were working at the gym, you know, and you Thank were very, Thank you working up. very hard. Thanks for, a lot. For Appreciate you it. it. This show's about you yeah. now. <laughs> no, it's fine. But I want to know, it's just I know what it was like, what you felt like be becoming world champion when you beat for this. Obviously, it you? obviously, I mean, becoming the first world champion ever um, in the area, um, it was some a great achievement. That, um, it was a dream come true. You know, um, no one thought I could make it. Um, even at myself, I would, I, would, I would agree that there were some if. The way there was toss off, like uh, if happy boy couldn't make it, can I make it? But uh, on the day of the fight, um, I was so motivated in so much that even Mr. Berman can can uh, attest to that. I am the one at the dressing room who called them that I'm ready now. Let's go, let's go fight. And they were like, "What?" I said, "Let's go out. Let's, let's go and fight. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go." And it was my time for the, I mean, for for my bout. Yes, yes. So I was so confident in so much that. Um, uh, even noticed becoming serious when um, on the on the third round that I was still there was still a lot of going on in my mind spiritually and everything. But uh, my mind came up and say, "Look, you in a fight now. Focus." And I started talking. Now I'm in a fight. Focus and then. So um, I knew I had this thing in my, my heart that I'm gonna win. I'm gonna yeah. beat this guy. Yeah. Um, well, it was a fantastic victory. Yeah. I mean, winning the yeah. world title against Fabrice Benchu in his hometown. That's what, another what thing. That, that like? That's another thing that motivated me now fighting in Israel. You can recall I mean back in the time religiously Israel is the area, you know. And I'm in Israel and yes. 
in my mind, it was just like everything was blessed for me. Uh, everything was made for me. I'm going to be the first world champion. I mean, achieving that on a holy land uh, in Israel. You know, those are things that were motivating me to say that there is no way that I'm going to lose. That you lose for sure, that motivation. Welcome. Your toughest fight. Can you remember your toughest fight ever as a professional boxer? You, you know, um, Brian, I fought a lot of wars. Um, most of my fights were, were tough because I was fighting guys who were champions before. Um, you even fought Kennedy McKinney, that was a guy fight. Huh? He was, at the time, Kennedy McKinney was like a gold medalist. Yeah. You know, a number one contender. Yes, yes. You know, obviously, yes. If um, I remember correctly, you were winning the fight as well. I was. Um, I was, I would say I was, because after the fight I watched the tape. I was winning the fight. It's just that there were a lot of things in my mind at the time, and I would not like us to go back to those things. Uh, that sort of disturbed me um, mentally, and uh, it sort of played a role in terms of um, getting, an, uh, can, can be getting an advantage of sort of like being able to beat me. Um, I remember around number, I think it was round nine, when I was saying to Luther, look, Luther, I'm not in a fight. I'm, on, I'm in a corner right there. I'm saying, I'm not in a fight, man. Can we just stop this? And then Luther Bages went crazy, that old man. That old man was like my father. You know, um, he was always there. He taught me a lot of things um, when I was there, spiritually and otherwise. It was the first time when I met somebody who would be in, wanted to know each and every move that I do, each and everything that I do in the gunfight. He always right there with me. You know, so um, I learned a lot from that. And he became, became so close, like he was like my father. So in the round nine, when he started to like go crazy when I was saying that, hey, man, I'm not in the fight. Um, well, why don't we just stop this? When crazy, I had to console him right then that okay okay we're gonna do it gonna, it is the reason why in round 10 and i just went straight to McKinney in that round just got all over him and just whooping him whooping him and then yes. he turned around and ran away you know um by turning around and running away uh did even nothing does he hang up his gloves and stuff like that after i, I noticed that after the fight when i was at home watched the people were saying that he sort of like he was giving up yeah you know and even the referee all those drama that that drama that happened over there, I noticed that three months after that fight uh, happened. Yeah. Um, so, to me, it was a great occasion, um, and uh, fighting sort of like number one, an Olympic gold medalist, number yeah, one sure. guy. And you were beating him. And I was beating well, him, but uh, unfortunately, welcome. it was not my time. Uh, yeah, so that's the off night for you with Kennedy Bikini, but you were winning the fight. And you beat the, the great Fabrice Bennett you in Israel. In Israel. I mean, you're a seven-time uh, undefeated IVF junior featherweight champion of the world. I rated you as South Africa's little sugar, Ray Leonard. I actually loved you as a, as a yeah. fighter. You were one of my sparring partners. Just tell us quickly what, what's happening in the life of Welcome Nita nowadays. We're sitting here in Umtata right now. <laughs> we're commentating today on a big yes. fight with some Pee Wee yes. Conco. Yes. So we work together with Supersport. But what else are you doing in the life of... Um, what, what's Welcome Nita doing in the life today? I'm still involved in boxing, besides other things that I'm doing. I'm, I'm working for um, um, Buffalo City Municipality at the MPEC department over there, um, just to keep my family going. I'm still involved in boxing. Um, do you try and manage fighters? Not, not, not as such, um, Brian, not as such, um, because I was, I'm focusing on amateurs mostly. Okay. Um, there are quite a number of clubs within the Buffalo City, I think about 50 boxing clubs that I'm working still developing with. youngsters. I'm developing youngsters. I have um, right now about 12 boxers who graduated from amateur to, awesome. to, to professional level, which is what I'm going to, it will be another phase for me to get into um, training, uh, working with their managers and trainers, also assisting them uh, here and there. It's more of a development uh, kind of a route that I've taken, I've taken now. I've I, I thought of like let me stay away from the professional level because there's a lot of it's great to there. see fighters like you yeah, that have yeah. got so much experience in the game giving back exactly you know, to the youth and exactly, that. exactly another thing that I'm working on on these amateurs is to you know for ever since we got into the international level at an amateur level we never achieved um, a, a level of like winning a gold medal uh, we never achieved uh, a position where we have a uh, Olympic gold medalist, Correct, yeah. I mean, champion in, uh, in so our country. The great welcome meeting uh, to get that's, us there. that's another goal. Okay. When I was a boxer, the goal was to break the record and get the, uh, bring the world title right in Eastern Cape. Yes. I did achieve that. 
But now the goal is to train somebody who is going to be a world champion, I mean, uh, uh, sort of like a world champion in amateur level, maybe awesome. Olympic uh, gold, medal, um, gold medalist. Um, even if he goes to a bronze, it will be fine because it will be an achievement because ain't no one right here has ever achieved that to that level, yeah. you know, according to the history of boxing. So I'm always, uh, it seems like my route is always like trying to uh, create a sort of like a, a, a milestone, you know, if I may put it yes. that way. Uh, by producing somebody, well, we, do, we do need amateur boxers to get into the Olympics and and to get up for the, the Commonwealth Games and all the big games that we involved with. But welcome, just like to say thank you very much for right. being on the Golden Gloves website. You you absolute legend in boxing. You promoted by Golden Gloves as well. Last question: Is boxing bigger than football in the Eastern Cape? Because yeah, somebody once said that to me. It is yes, true. It is. We go. They love boxing more than football in the Eastern yes, Cape. Ladies and gentlemen, the great welcome me to seven-time IBF champion of the world. Thank you for joining us. Just want to like to mention one thing, Jay. If uh, it was not for Golden Gloves, um, I wouldn't be where I am as a boxer today. Um, even not only just winning the title, but a lot of things I've learned through Rodney Berman and his team and stuff like that. Absolutely. So, uh, I always, the greatest I always promoter in Africa. Yeah. Thank you, welcome. All Thanks right, again.